Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Queen Book Bites here at the Scott County Public Library in Georgetown, Kentucky. I am Miss Kelly, and this is Miss Mary Lou. And uh, today, I feel like I should start off with a joke, but I don't have one, so. <laughs> Sorry. We're talking about funny books. Yeah. It's April 1st. It's April, April Fool's April Day. April Fool's Day. So, uh, of course, yeah, funny books. We had to. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have a joke. Sorry. It's all right. Okay. You won't need one if you read these books, because you'll be That's true, to yeah. Time. They're they're delightful. I laughed out loud reading all three of mine today. <laughs> they... Yeah, my coworkers laughed at me because I was just sitting there reading at the desk and I'm like, Kelly, what are you doing? <laughs> I read a bunch of this one out loud at the desk the other day, actually. <laughs> one of the lady, there was a lady doing a fax and then she heard me reading it out loud and was laughing too. <laughs> so this is called The League of Picky Eaters by Stephanie V.W. Lucianovic. Yes, and why did you pick that book? I why picked this book because this book? because it speaks to me. <laughs> <laughs> I made Mary Lou buy this. She wasn't going to, and I was like, Mary Lou, there's a book called The League of Picky Eaters. It has a lime green cover, which is my favorite color, and there's a grilled cheese sandwich and french fries on the front cover. I'm a picky eater. I love grilled cheese. I mean, french fries, I mean, I'll, I could take a really I like french fries. But Which is really odd, because if it's green, you don't eat it. That is not true. Oh. I'm sorry, is there there one green thing you eat? I like green beans. There you go, there you go. I'll eat a salad if I'm getting hibachi. It's about the only time, honestly. Yeah, so I was like, Mary Lee, you have to buy this book. It, it, it speaks to me. I like Kelly, so I got it. <laughs> and it's great. This is really, really, really funny. Is it like high quality literature? Nope. <laughs> but it's delightful. So uh, our main character here is uh, Minerva. And she is a picky eater. She uh, she lives in a town called Muffaletta, which is a sandwich. And uh, she goes to St. Julia Child's middle and or elementary and middle school, of course, named after Julia Child, the famous yes chef. Yes, uh, she has been given a sainthood, and this school is named after her. And uh, so this whole town is like all about food. Foodies, foodies, foodies. And um, she is going into, I believe, sixth grade, and they have to take a food taste test to get uh, leveled into different classrooms, which are, I must read them for you because it's excellent. Um, so, there are three levels. The top is the gifted and gourmet class, also known as gag. The becoming a real foodie class, also known as barf. And the remedial eating to change habits class, also known as wretch. Um, so if you, if, I'm sure you'll be unsurprised to find out that Minerva ends up in wretch. Um, her her two other best friends, Patricia and Cindy, end up in gag, and they end up in the same class in gag. And uh, they've decided that, that they're done being friends with Minerva. And Minerva is it's. It's a bad time. She has a bad experience at Patricia's birthday party. It's a slumber party, and they they bring out mac and cheese, and she's like, oh, it's great. I love mac and cheese. No, there was, like, lobster or some nonsense mixed in there, and she's like, oh. And then and there's, there's a fish, and she brings out, Patricia brings out a grilled cheese and has clearly put peppers in it but taken them out, and Minerva much like me, can, you can taste them when they've been in there. You can tell, even if it's not still there. And so she takes the grilled cheese and is like, and she like opens it and is like, what is happening? And like Patricia's like, ha, 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 I knew you would do that, but there's no peppers. You're not going to find them. I took them out. <laughs> so poor Minerva goes home crying. It's awful. And she slowly, she had had, had preconceived notions about her fellow wretch classmates. Um, and she slowly realizes that some of those were because Patricia was, was the one that was like making fun of them and stuff. Uh, and she, she grow, grows to realize that you know, her classmates aren't that bad. She kind of likes them. They're real weird. But like, in a good way. And so uh, she gets a note in her, in her backpack from the L-O-P-E, the League of Picky Eaters. 
and uh, it, it gives her some some hints as to how to make wretch a better class and uh, how they how they can pass and get through. And it is just it's real silly. It sounds so good. It's so funny. <laughs> I loved it. Highly suggest you should all read this. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to talk about Elfie Unperfect. And this uh, is just written by Kristen Mahoney, who's written some books I really like. I love mm -hmm. she did the, um, the 47 People You Meet in Middle School, mm -hmm. which I really like, and Annie's Life in Lists. Didn't you read oh, that? Oh, yes, I really yes, like so that. She wrote that. So That's her other books have been really good. It's got a, you know, Dan Santat did the cover, and I love mm -hmm. Dan Santat. It's so good. good. It's really good. But this book, you know, it looked really funny to me, and it has some really funny parts. And I did read it. I've been wanting to read it, so I read it for this these, these book talks. It's not like it's not like that. Mm -hmm. It's not hilarious, but it's it's got some funny parts in it. And Elfie is um, she's a rising fifth grader, and um, you know I, I'm going to describe her. And I think you probably encountered this type of person in your class. She's the one who's like, I know the answer. I know. I know. I know. And she's super smart, mm -hmm. and she knows everything. She knows more than the teacher. And she hates group projects because she's the only one who does any work and she and she because nobody else knows how to do it so she tells everybody else how to do it and they don't want to do it so they don't know so she she is doing it so she just mm -hmm. oh and just nobody gets her you know and so she's um done with her little little public elementary school and she's gotten a scholarship at this great private school that's got a great science lab and she is so excited and oh the other thing about elfie is she's a tattletale like she even created the job and got the school to let her do it, the, the lunchroom monitor. So she catch her friends, or, or not her friends, she has no friends, catching everyone, breaking all the rules, and she could tell on them, and it didn't go too well. They in the school like told her to quit. Uh, but she um, she's a person who who tattles a lot. And she has this cousin, Jenna, who um, they're in the same grade. Everybody thinks they must be best friends, same grade, cousins. Well, they just don't get along at all because Jenna's cool. You know, people mm -hmm. like her. She's mm -hmm. a neat person. And she tries to put up with LB, but you know, it's just well, her her Jenna spends a lot of time in her house because of her own family situation, which is not great. And you know, she's on her phone all the time, which just annoys LB because her parents won't let her have a phone. But that's because LB watches science superstars on TV all the time. Mm -hmm. Like all these videos. But anyway, so Elfie's going to this new school. She is so excited. Her backpack is packed, her pencils are sharpened. She's off to school on her first day. And the first day there, she gets assigned to do a group project. They're gonna do like big and marshmallow mm -hmm. And there's a boy, it's a boy named uh, Colton and a girl named Sienna. Sienna's new at the school too. And Colton's grandfather gave all the money to build the library and he thinks it's a stupid project mm -hmm. and so he's going to get his phone out to get some ideas but you're not supposed to use your phone and it's cheating right so I'll be like what are we supposed to do on my first thing first day of this group project and, and my co my, my cohort is he's cheating and and then the teacher's walking over she grabs his phone sticks it in her backpack so the teacher won't see it and he's really mad and he accuses her of stealing his phone. And she gets kicked out of school before she's even gotten to lunchtime on the first day of school. And she's trying not to tattle. She just think, did you take it? Yes, I took the phone. <laughs> so anyway, she's got to make this appeal to get to get back in this school. So in the meantime, though, it's gonna take about a month to appeal it. She's gotta go back to her elementary school much humbled. Mm. And that's the that's the essence of the book is what Elfie learns going back to this school, much humbled. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really good. I mean, it's really a lot of great life lessons. There's some very funny moments. She has a babysitter that she loves. It's always been her babysitter. And um, I, I'm doing one little spoiler here. Her babysitter gets cancer. She's a young woman. Ooh. She gets cancer. And you know, several things like that happen that really help Elfie get a better perspective on mm. life. But it's it's really good. She's a kitten. The kitten's great. <laughs> Elfie Unperfect. Mm. Fun. Sweet. It's a very sweet novel. I'm going to swerve mm. to uh this is the first in the series. The series is called Once Upon a Tim. Not once upon a time, once upon a Tim. 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 
Yes, it is by Stuart Gibbs, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with. He does all the spy school books, and he's got, he got lots, lots of books. He's done so many books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one skews a little younger. I think my, the back of my book here says 7 to 10. But I, I realized I, I tend to read books maybe for a little older, and I need to stop doing that. So stop doing that. Yep, that's stop. how words work. <laughs> need to stop doing that. So I uh, skewed a little younger, and I'm very glad I did, because this is hysterical. <laughs> So, uh, Tim lives in the kingdom of Wild, W-Y-L-D, and uh, he is a peasant, which, as he will tell you, is terrible. He hates it. The only way to, to get out of it is, uh, well, the, the easy way is if the kingdom calls up knights. And what do you know? They do. The princess from the next kingdom has been kidnapped by a beast. Oh, I need to cover. Oh, I should have marked this. The beast has a great name. It is... Not a sphinx, it's a stinks. A stinks. A stinks, <laughs> yes. This is it right up here on the cover. It's got two heads, the two lion heads, and they hate each other. So they're really grumpy all the time. And then it's also got wings and talons, and it, it stinks, literally. It's, it smells awful. So nobody likes the stinks, but it, uh, one of them has kidnapped the princess from the neighboring kingdom. So the prince of Tim's kingdom, Kingdom of Wild, is calling up for knights. And Tim's like, yes, this is my chance. I hate being a peasant. It's terrible. I'm going to go do it. Um, yeah, we'll see what he does with his best friend, whose name I also have forgotten already. This is terrible. Uh, Belinda. She is also a peasant, but she's a girl, and so it's even worse for her. She always, There are only certain things she can do. Even as, as a peasant, Tim can do more things than she can. And so she's like, let's go. I'm going to be a knight. And he's like, oh, you're a girl. You can't be a knight. And she's like, you want that? <laughs> <laughs> so she dresses up like a boy. She steals her cousin's clothes. And they become knights because they're the only two that showed up. <laughs> so uh, they go on a, a journey. I don't want to spoil too much because it's, it's, not, it's not a very long book. Um, but yeah, basically uh, Tim and Belinda are 100% getting used by this prince and his, uh, his magician uh, advisor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which uh, his name is not Merlin, it is Nerlin. Um, yeah, yeah. And there's also the vill village idiot. Let's see if I can find that bit really quick because uh, it was delightful and I giggled and read it out loud to a bunch of people. Where did he go? Oh, bother. I can't find it here, I'll just stop. But it, uh, it's really funny. Um, anyway, oh, yes, so heavily illustrated, it's great. And also, here is something to note. There are little bits where uh, the word is real uh, big and they, they're just marked with arrows called IQ boosters. And it kind of gives you uh, an example of, of what this word means. So, you know, you're gonna learn stuff, but like in a really funny way. So let's see what this one was. Oh, yes. Therefore, Prince Rupric looked like this. He was apoplectic, and his trial, that his trials were so poorly attended, as he felt it meant that his subjects didn't like him very much. Apoplectic means really, really angry, as in, my mother was apoplectic after I said that her farts were, were malodorous, which was a former IQ. IQ apoplectic? Okay, well, I think unless that's... Am I saying it wrong? I always start apoplectic. I said, what is that word, apoplectic? I've never heard that. Well, maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> but it reads the same. Does it? There's no, uh, no the pronunciation no, guide, so you have to look it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll let you know next time. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's very funny and just a fun little uh, adventure story. And it's the first uh, in the series, like I said. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I found it. So, Ferkel, he's the village idiot. Um, and he technically shows up for the tryouts, too. But he, they're, they're pretty sure he just kind of wandered by and ended up there and wasn't really trying to be a knight. Because he's, he's just there stuffing mud in his pants. Um, oh, uh, meanwhile, Ferkel somehow got the hilt of his knife stuck up his nose. Right now, you might be wondering to yourself, why do you even have a village idiot? The answer is, I don't know. Our village had had an idiot for as long as anyone could remember. So did every other village. Ferkel's father had been an idiot, and his father before him, and his father before him. They didn't really do much or contribute to the town in any way, but every now and then they were good for a laugh. 
I understand that such people even exist in your time, although they are no longer called village idiots. They're called television talk show ho hosts. <laughs> so, you know, just to give you a taste of the humor in this book. Um, it's, it's a very specific humor, I will admit, but uh, it's real funny. It's good. Good stuff. <laughs> so silly. Highly suggest that as well. All right, I'm going to talk about Dara Palmer's major drama. And this book was written by Emma Sheba. And uh, I'm, I'm going to you know, tell you, I'm only halfway through this book. But it's, a, it's, it's uh, I really like it a lot. Um, and it's another one, it's, it's very funny. It's laugh out loud funny, a lot. But it also has some serious stuff in it. Dara Palmer is, um, I'm going to guess middle school, right? Mm -hmm. And her life goal is to be a Hollywood movie star. She lives in England. Um, and but she she wants to be a, a famous actress. That is her goal in life. Everything in her. I love it. There be scenes where she envisions her life as a movie, mm. and she's being courted by this movie star that she loves. I mean, like I think it's like his name is Brad Bradley Pickford or something. So uh -huh. I'm sure it's like Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's some other girl too that Lin Lindsay somebody probably mm -hmm. Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Lohan or something like that. But anyway, so like her life is she 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 imagines it as this frequent movie script in her mind. Mm -hmm. So all these asides and how she deals with her problems through this this dialogue. But she uh, anyway she is so excited to go to the play tryouts. Uh, they're going to do the Sound of Music and she's going to be Maria. That's the West Side Story. Anyway, she's going to be Maria Von Trapp, and uh, she is just sure of it. And her best friend, um, whose name I cannot remember now, Lay Lacy, Laney, Laney, Lacy, Lacy. She and her best friend Lacy are going to try out, and they do. And uh, Lacy gets a bit part, like the chorus, and Dara gets nothing. She is. Devastated, mm. and Miss Miss Snelling, the, the the drama teacher, suggests that maybe Dara should come to her acting classes. And Dara goes, "I don't need acting classes. <laughs> I'm a star. It's only for losers that go to acting classes." Mm -hmm. So she's she's very you know very sold on herself. Mm -hmm. Now, Dara's father dares to suggest that perhaps the reason she didn't get a part is because Dara does not look like a German Maria Montrap. She is Cambodian. She's an adopted child. Her parents adopt her, who are white, in England, Englanders, English people, uh, adopted British. her from Cambodia, British. And um, she is particularly dark skin, black hair, and her father says, you shouldn't feel bad about that, but you, you know, Maria Von Trapp was fair-skinned German woman. And until somebody points out that Liesel, the daughter of Maria von Trapp, her stepdaughter, mm -hmm. is, was the child that was cast as her, was Jamaican, black skin. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this all kind of triggers what the serious part of this book is, Dara, for the first time in her life, dealing with her racial and ethnic identity. She's never really thought about the fact that she was of a different ethnicity, a different race. She's never, doesn't know anything about Cambodian history. And, um, and how she might have ended up as an orphan. And so the, where I am in halfway through the book is she is, is very seriously delving in to what that means, but also why, why are all the Hollywood actors white skin? I mean, where are the parts and movies and stuff about people like me that have brown skin and, and are Cambodian or, or, or Japanese or Chinese or you know all the different ethnicities from those countries? And so her brother, Challenge and her brother is like this real social activist. Change the world, make it different, Dara. So she is she is now where I am. She's taking acting classes. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna see how she changes the world. But she is just hysterical. She's just she's just um, uh, there was one funny thing I wanted to try reading. Oh there are times when the words people say are bigger than just words. They're full of something so intense you can't even breathe. Right then, my chest caved in with all the feeling there was in what my mom had just said. Some feelings are just so feelingy. <laughs> they just hardly fit into your body. Mm. So even when she's saying something really serious, she mm -hmm. says it in a really funny way. I just, 
I just thought she was a feeling yeah, yes. yeah, feeling yeah, 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 I get that. <laughs> so, um, anyway, Dear Palmer's Major Drama by Emma Shiva. I'm excited. I'm going to finish this tonight. It's a quick read. Great pictures. It's got hilarious pictures in it. Great illustrations. Ta da! My phone today. I have also not finished. I, I started it um, this morning and I'm on page 94. It's real good. Um, Middle School is a Drag by Greg Howard. Um, I don't know if you all know, uh, drag queens are, are those who dress up uh, in clothing of the opposite gender and perform. It is generally very humorous, it, intentionally so. Um, so our main character here is uh, Mikey Pruitt, and he is an entrepreneur. He has a business called Anything Inc. Mostly because he, everything he keeps trying is not working out. So he like tried a, a croquet teaching class and four people came the first week and then they never came back. So uh, that didn't work out well. Um, and, and everything is like that. Like, you know, something just, it seems like a great idea, but it just didn't, it doesn't work out. Um, one of his uh, schoolmates, a kid in the, uh, the grade above him, walks in one day and is like, hey, so I hear you do anything, right? Like, that's, you, you do anything, Inc. And he's like, yes, you get it. Yes, what can I do for you? And he's like, okay, so I am Coco Caliente, mistress of madness and mayhem, AKA creator Julian Vasquez. And uh, yeah, Julian is a drag queen and uh, is wants to take it to the next level. And so Julian hires Mikey as his uh, talent manager. And uh, Mikey has just come out as gay to his parents and his two best friends, uh, not his sister, who he calls a demon. Um, she also has a cat named Tootie, because she farts all the time. He hates the cat so much, it's really funny. Um, and uh, I get to, in Mikey at first has no idea what drag is. Not a singular clue. So Julian is like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I, I'm a performer, I do drag. And Julian, like, or Mikey's like, yeah, 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 of course, of course, I can do this, it's great. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you to the next level. It's gonna be amazing. And then immediately after he has to Google it and is like, what is, what is drag? <laughs> so he has to Google it, and uh, he uh, learns about Mama Ru, RuPaul, and is watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race, and getting inspiration from this. And and at school, no one, it, he and his three friends are like outcasts, uh, and he's just trying to fly, fly under the radar, because the eighth graders are terrible, you know, the big popular kid, there's this one guy, Jeremy, that's especially awful to all of them. And uh, so he doesn't really want it to be out, but he's out. And so he's trying to kind of toe the line between helping, helping Julian Coco Caliente out and uh, keeping, keeping it on the DL at school. So I have a feeling that's not gonna work out very well for him. <laughs> Again, I'm only, I'm about a third of the way through, so I can't guarantee that, but I'm- It's got to end with a great drag show at the end. I so am, I, it has to. <laughs> yeah, there already was a great drag scene. He, uh, Julian auditions and is, is um, lip syncing to Beyonce's Run the World, and it just, it's delightful. His mom and grandma, his abuela, they both are just like, yes. You're slaying, it's amazing. And uh, then Julian's dad comes home and is not, it's not having it. So there's also a little tension there. Whereas uh, Mikey's parents are like, yeah, we knew you were gay, it's okay. <laughs> you think any boys are cute today? <laughs> and he's like, God, stop, <laughs> I'm 12. <laughs> but thus far, I can, I can highly suggest this as well. <laughs> Well, my last book is called Ben Yokoyama and the Cookie of Doom, and it's book one in the Cookie Chronicles. And this book is, I'm, I always save my favorite for last. I loved this book. I just loved it. It made me laugh so much. And it's written by Matthew Swinson and Robbie Bear. And I'll tell you one of the delights in this book. Matthew Swinson and Bobby, Robbie Bear are married to each other. Mm. And um, Matthew is basically in charge of the text and she does all the illustrations. The illustrations are great. But they do a little um, 
a little thing at the end with their own little dialogue. They put their photographs of their heads on top of these bodies she's drawn, and they do all this little dialogue about their marriage and how they work together and what kind of stuff they create. And they also do an illustrated history of the fortune cookie, which I bet you thought fortune cookies came from China. <laughs> they do not. They are Japanese in their origin. I did not know that. Also, something new. Super American. <laughs> That's where most of the fortune cookies are eaten. However, Ben Yokoyama, he um, he goes out to eat. I, I believe his father is Japanese. They never quite identify that, but. Um, anyway, he goes out to eat with his aunt because his parents are home paying bills. And they go to a Chinese restaurant. And Ben loves noodles, noodles, any kind of noodle. He is obsessed with noodles. And his aunt orders him lo mein, they eat, and then they get fortune cookies. He's never seen a fortune cookie. And he opens his fortune cookie, and what's his piece of paper? And she says, it's your fortune. And he reads his fortune. And the fortune says, do, 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 do. <laughs> Look at this, he thinks it's pretty scary. He sees the kid that has been. Fortune! No! 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 no. It says, it says, he loves noodles, chow mein noodles. Um, oh, 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 oh. It says, live each day as if it were your last. Not a very good fortune. Well, Ben's pretty literal about things, and he starts <laughs> thinking about it. He says, okay, okay, the cookie said I have to do it. I'm going to live this next day as if it's my last day. He goes home, he goes to bed, he sets his alarm clock for 12.01 in the morning, and he comes up with this little bucket list mm -hmm. that he's going to do. And the first thing on his bucket list is he's going to put together yet again his 1,000 piece model of the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. So he gets up at 12.01, he gets to work on it, but he realizes that from the last time he did this, this thing, he had to use some glue to get it to hold together. Well, where's the glue? Well, the glue, hmm, he can't remember. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's in my dad's closet. I've got to go get in my parents' bedroom while they're sleeping. Oh, uh -oh. the dog is in front of the door. How can I get the dog to move? The dog won't get up. Go in the kitchen, he's got to fix some milk. Give it to the dog. He gives it to the dog, takes the dog, gets the dog outside. He sneaks into the closet. He's getting the glue. It wakes his dad up because the dog is barking outside because it wants to get in. And his dad's, what are you doing? Dad, it could be the last day of my life. I'm building the Taj Mahal. And his father goes, it's not the last day of your life. Go back to bed. It's a, it could be the last day of my life. It could, Dad. It really couldn't. Your dad goes, God, I guess that's right. We better get up. And, you know. So it's like every person that tells him to stop gets, oh my gosh, you're right. So like, there's this whole team of characters <laughs> living out the last day of their life. It is hysterical. But I love it because there's a little undertone of what would you do if it was the last day of your life? What really makes you think, you know? And the kinds of things. And well, I'm, I'm just, you know, by the end of the book, I'm just saying, okay, I know I'm not supposed to do this part. It's the first in a series, right? Where they, yeah, where they land is they're, they're, they're sharing food with their neighbors. Hmm. And they're all kind of savoring those really simple joys that, of life. Mm -hmm. oh, it's just wonderful. <laughs> I, I read it in a day because I couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, 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 every page is like that loud funny. Mm -hmm. But it's so good. It's also been, and, you know, I just thought it was going to be stupid. It yeah. was not stupid at all. Ben Yokoyama and the Cookie of Doom is the first one. The third one has come out. Uh -huh. So we got three of them. And it's by Matthew Swanson and Robbie Baker. Yay, Matthew Swenson and Robbie Bear. Good job. <laughs> so next month, romance. Yeah. There's just there's there's more and more coming out for younger for tweens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've already got my three books picked out. I've got two of them. Oh wow. I, I am know, I know. not anywhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> ready. So come back and visit us the first week of June. Yes, I'll see you next week for a for afternoon and then I think the week after that, you may be uh, showing an anime movie here in the library on Friday. Ooh, wow. Yeah, oh, that's so if that's your cool. thing, come check it out. Uh, but we'll see you.